I have met so many nice people on the internet who are offering free education on Islam. First of all, they tell you Muslims are worshipping another god called Allah, which is a moon deity that is ordering Muslims to kill everyone. And when I try to respond to them, like, brother, let me correct the false information you have. It's like, no, you need to educate yourself. You don't know what Allah means. So I know it is impossible to help someone who is so arrogant that he thinks he knows everything. However, I know there are people who actually need to know. So we decided to start with this question, who is Allah? First of all, Allah is the Arabic word for God with capital G. So if you write in English, God with small g, in Arabic we say ilah. If you write God with capital G, they God, the only God, then in Arabic it is Allah. As we can see here in Google Translate, when I wrote the word God, it just gave me in Arabic translation Allah. If I translate it to Spanish, for example, as you can see here, it will give me the word Deus. So is Deus another God than the English God or is it just translation? So Deus, God with a capital G, Allah, they are referring to the same God in different languages. To understand what I'm saying, let's look at the Arabic Christian Bible together. This is the cover of the book. It says here, Allah Mahabba, which is God is all loving. Allah Mahabba. And here at the bottom of the cover, it says, Aqama fi Allah. Again, the word Allah is very clear in the book. So is the word Allah used by Arab Christians? Of course, it is used all the time in the Arabic churches. Is the word Allah used by Arabic Jews? Of course. It is the Arabic word for God. Why wouldn't they use it? Brother Yusuf Estes here explained it in a very, very good way. So let's listen to it first and then continue our conversation. We say Allah. Okay, so that's God to the Muslims. Some say it's not even the God of the Christians and so on. It's just a God. Some even said it's a moon God. But let us now look at the linguistic of the word Allah. It in itself is the beauty of Islam. Because the word in Arabic doesn't mean God. Just in case you thought it did, it doesn't. Because we have a word in Arabic for the word in English, God. It's called Elah. Elah, God. God, Elah. That's the word. But when we speak about the one and only God, the one that's to be worshipped, the God of Adam, the God of Abraham, and the God of Moses, God of Jesus, Christ, peace be upon him, and the God of Muhammad, peace be upon him, we are talking about essentially the only God that's worthy to be worshipped. No other God. Now, what would be the proof for this? I, I realize that we have a lot of detractors who will say, no, 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 it's not true, I don't believe it. Let's uh, get a proof from the English translation of the Bible. That's a good place to start. Around the earth, there are many hotels and motels. And almost every one of them that you go to, there's a drawer beside the bed that when you open it up, you'll find a book in there and you'll take it out. Now, what is that book? And you already know the answer. It's the Bible. It's the Gideon publication of the King James Version of the Bible. The Gideons are very proud of it because they've translated it into so many languages. If you'll turn a few pages right in the beginning, you'll find examples of the translation to Chinese and Korean and into Urdu, the language of Pakistan. You'll find it into Tamil. You'll find it translated into Afrikaans language, which happens to be the first. And the second language translated to is Arabia, Arabic. And there is an example of each one of these languages from the verse in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And you know it very well. For God so loved the world. That's how it begins. And if you look in the Arabic language, the example that they gave in that Bible, it says Allah. Allah. That's what it says. For Allah so loved the world. So if it's not the same God, then why? All over the entire earth, Everywhere I go, I find this exact same word being used in the Bible of the Christians. 
Now you might say, well, well, uh, what about the Old Testament? Well, just in case you would like to check it out, page one of the book of Genesis, of the very beginning of the Quran, page one has 17 verses. <coughs> and there's the word Allah, Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha, 17 times. So just as it's the God for the children of Israel in Arabic language, and it's the God for the Arabs who are Christians, it's also the same God for the Muslims. The word is Allah. In the English language, they only have one word, God. Little g-o-d, it means something worshipped. It could be idols, images, pictures, statues, it could be human beings, it could be anything. This is God's, little g-o-d-s. But when you mean the God, you have to capitalize the g, you have to make a big g. Now what happens if you're going to start the sentence with the word God? You have to make a big G anyway, don't you? So you wouldn't know if it was God, big God, or God, a little God, just any old God. You wouldn't know. Also, whenever you're speaking to someone, they can't see the letters. So when you say God, which God? What God are you talking about? In Arabic, though, it's clear. When you say Elah, okay, he's talking about a God. And Allah is an Elah. But he's also Al-Ilah, the only Elah. And when you say Allah, this firms it up. And there's no doubt in anybody's mind that you're talking about the one and only God. The word Allah in the Arabic language cannot be made plural. There can't be more than one. Okay, that perfectly fits the unique God of the believers. Because there's not more than one. He's only one. There's no God beside God. Second point is this, it can't be made female or male. There's no gender to the word. Not like anything else, not male, not female, and yet he is the all Allah, the only God. You can also ask the Jews who Allah is. Let's listen to the small clip so we can understand. I don't believe in Allah. Would you care to mention anything? At yeah, well, when I did before, I'll do now also. Uh, oh, Allah is taken the name from Alaka. No, Alaka, which is, we use that word all the time. We have the same God as the Arabs. We believe in the same God, one God. <coughs> so it's a paradox. See, the Christians believe in the uh, Trinity, the, you know, the, the, whatever that's supposed to mean. But it's a part of it is their their God, who's the JC we call him. But uh, <laughs> that so that's uh, not our belief at all. We we're not allowed to believe in anything like that. And First. we're in better terms with the Christians generally than with the Arabs, generally speaking. But we have in common. We believe in the same God. Right? As a matter of fact, speaking once to Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, the greatest rabbi of our generation, he said, Allah, that's the Arabs, Arabs God, the same God that we have. He wasn't afraid to talk about it, they have the same God. But Allah means God, the Alukat that we say, and uh, they believe in the one God who created the world. Was there an event that made the Muslims break away and change the name of God to whatever? They didn't change the name of God. They said, Allah, that's the name of the God. They didn't there... break away from any. Why did they break away? They, they, they come from the children of Abraham, of Yishmael. We come from Yitzchak, and they come from Yishmael. We're not only referring to God as Allah. We're referring to God in... A lot of ways. When we say the most merciful, we're referring to God. When we're saying the all-powerful, we're referring to God. When we're saying the all-knowing, we're referring to God. When we're saying the judge, we're referring to God. When we're using the word Rabbi, which is my Lord, my teacher, the one who I follow, we're referring to God. And many more names. So these names are just language to describe God. That's it. Of course, that does not make Muslims believe in three gods or worshipping saints. You can understand our perspective more from this Jew. The Muslims, the idolatry has been removed from their hearts. A Muslim does not know idolatry, he does not know paganism, he has no form of what, whatsoever of any grain left in his heart. Therefore, it is permitted unto a Jew, when he enters a land where he cannot find a synagogue, that he, is for, that he is allowed to pray in a Muslim mosque. He's okay, it's fine, it's okay. Hey, I can go to a Muslim mosque and pray if I have to, if I can't find a, a shul. However, Maimonides says, be careful. 
If a Jew enters a land where there is no mosque or a synagogue, then he is forbidden to enter a Christian church if there is one. Do not pray in a Christian church. And the reason why is because Christians do not worship the same God we do. They worship the pagan. They, they are idolaters. They are called Avodah Zara in Hebrew, which means idol worshippers. So exquisitely said, so wonderfully stated. Oh my goodness. And you know, it's, it's quite interesting that um, unfortunately, there should be more Jews actually stating the, the facts as it is that you know Muslims and J J J Jews and Muslims we both worship the same God. Uh, no matter what what these crazy evangelical Christians are saying, they're basically nutbags. Whatever they say, it's it's they just try to come up with exceeding ex exceeding lies, redundant lies. These the type of lies that only a child in the kindergarten could easily make up. And emphasize that Arabs. Arab Christians, and you know, this is what's also funny, and I thankfully I remember this because this is what I really wanted to say. Get, get a load of this Christian evangelists. Evangelists. I should refer to you guys as evangelists. There are actually 20 million Arab Christians in the Middle East today, as well as the United States, as well as around the world. And Arab Christians and their religious services and their Sunday services and mass or whatever God freaking services they have. Arab Christians refer in the Arabic Bible, the Arabic translation of the Bible, they say Allah in reference to God. Now I would like to ask these evangelicals, what say ye of these people who claim to believe in your Jesus? What say ye to them? Now are you going to go chase them and say, oh you're worshipping the set, you're worshipping the devil. The devil is Allah. Just lets you know that classical Arabic is very close to classical Hebrew, biblical Hebrew, as well as classical Aramaic. They all tend to agree, they all agree in unison that Allah, Hashem, Allah are through etymology, which is the study of the root of words, have come to unanimous agreement that Allah is the perfect Arabic name of God, that it cannot be made into a male, through its perfection, it cannot be made into a, a, a male gender nor a female gender. Rather, it is a neutral personification, not personification, but rather a neutral attribute to God. Such wonderful history. So to sum it up, Allah is the Arabic word to describe the God of Adam, the God of Noah, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jesus, and the God of Muhammad. And this part is very interesting. If you open with me an Aramaic dictionary, of course Aramaic is the language of Jesus, and if you write the word God, you will find this word, which you can read the pronunciation of it, Allah. Let this sink in. So from now on, when you read these verses in the New Testament in English, you need to understand that this was the original Aramaic word before it was translated to English. So for example, John 8.40, as it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Originally, it was the truth that I heard from Allah. Luke 4, 8, Jesus answered, it's written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Originally, it is worship Allah only in its original language. Mark 12, 29, the most important one, Jesus answered, hear, O Israel, your Lord our God, the Lord is one. So originally it was, listen, O Israel, Allah, is one. Or as we say it in Arabic, La ilaha illallah, the first part of the shahad. Next episode, we're gonna talk about what is Islam. Did Islam start with Prophet Muhammad or Islam was present before the Prophet Muhammad? So subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get notifications for the next episode. And Muslim brothers and sisters, support our Dahawa project by engaging with the video because unfortunately this is how the YouTube algorithm works. The more you engage with likes, with shares, with comments, the more the algorithm will suggest it to other people. So help us spread the words of God. And if you want to support us financially, we will leave the donation links below the video. Thanks and Salaam Alaikum.